Thank you. Good morning. Thank you. As uh, Barbara mentioned, my name is Dan Stagall. I'm a taxonomist at IBM in the digital platforms team. And today I'm going to talk about some work that we're doing for an internal project that we call the Cognitive Tagging Service. Uh, Cognitive Tagging Service is a program that we're developing that orchestrates components of natural language processing, machine learning, and taxonomy, specifically for the purposes of auto-tagging and generating meaningful metadata for our digital marketing content. Uh, this work is being done by an interdisciplinary team, and at the end of the presentation, I'll acknowledge and share uh, the names of the participants, but I especially want to thank and acknowledge my uh, my colleague and my collaborator, Maya Reimer, who's not able to attend in person today, but uh, many of the ideas and many of the innovations I'm going to talk about um, came from our team, and, and she was a, a, a pivotal part of that. Uh, so, uh, as I mentioned, I'll, I'll, I'll present this in the form of a sort of a story or a case study, where I'll talk about a little bit about the background, what we're working on, and what our use case is, and our solution approach, and some of the results that we're seeing, and, and where we see going with this next. Uh, but before I get into that story, I'll just tell you how the story ends. So this if anybody wants to leave in the middle, you can. Meaning that uh, I'll, I'll tell you which is the, the key takeaways are. There are really two, take, te, key take, two key takeaways from this story. Uh, the first is that um, what we're doing is in and itself not, the innovation that we're doing is, is not so much using machine language and NLP to generate metadata from text. That's, that's, there's a lot of ways to do that and there have been for a number of years. Um, the innovation part of this is how we're working with some tools that are relatively new to the market and how we're orchestrating them, uh, again, sort of a combination of text analytics APIs and software as a service offerings to create this service uh, using, again, some, some fairly new, uh, newly available commercial technologies. Uh, the second piece of this is that I, I think one of the things that we're doing in our approach is to try to find kind of a happy middle ground between what we might see on two extremes as two approaches to doing this kind of work. Uh, on one extreme is the approach that says NLP and, and machine learning work is really hard and you need a highly trained specialist to do this. On the other extreme, you see the evolution of, of some tools that are maybe taking more of a fully democratized approach that says anybody can do this and you don't need to know, you don't need to know how to write code. And so what we're doing is taking sort of a kind of a, taking a type of middle ground with this and uh, the bridge between those two extremes is the taxonomy and that's why I'll emphasize how the taxonomy really stitches these two approaches together and creates something that's both accessible, we think is both accessible and usable but also has some controls that are, um, uh, that allow for human uh, curation and human intervention. And intervention. So first of all, uh, just a little bit of background about our team. Um, digital Platforms is part of our digital business group. It's a marketing division within corporate, and we're responsible for driving the customer experience through IBM's websites and digital sales channels. And within the Platforms team, specifically, we oversee an ecosystem of various tools that are used for producing and managing digital marketing content. That includes content, mar uh, content management systems, digital asset management, uh, keyword research and SEO, editorial calendaring, and a whole host of other applications. What they have in common, and where taxonomy plays a, plays a pivotal role in this, is twofold. Uh, number one, a lot of our activity is focused on standardizing the vocabularies that are used for tagging uh, content that we create in these systems, so that we can track and manage the content through all stages of its workflow, using uniform metadata and uniform taxonomy values. The second piece that we're working on is automation of those processes, and that's where cognitive tagging service comes, comes into play. Um, the real pain points that we're trying to solve are, as I mentioned, around standardization and, and, and automation, uh, because we produce a lot of digital marketing content. Um, in the US market alone, we know of at least 10,000 URLs that, were there, that are in our, what we call our digital registry. That's a central directory of, uh, of URLs and, and published pages, and those are the ones that we know about. Um, when we multiply that across multiple markets and multiple languages, we're talking easily close to half a million uh, pieces of content, pieces of URLs that are out there. And it's, that's, that's, that's a lot of content, and quite frankly, a lot of it is very expensive to produce. So one of our objectives is to be able to track how our content is performing in the marketplace. And and the only way that we can do that is with good tagging. So we want to be able to measure and tag, for example, for our marketing investment dollar, which topics 
that we're creating content on drive the most user engagement and lead the customer closest to, to, to a sale and to actually converting and, and converting from a prospect to a customer. So tracking and metrics is a big part of what we're doing. The other part is more in the user experience, and that's using the metadata that we generate to personalize the customer experience and be able to serve up content according to uh, particular site users' interests and, and, and user profile. And that's all dependent on good tagging. And there are some forms of tagging that we do pretty well right now. Like we're pretty good at tagging content by our brand and by our product. But one of the areas where there's a bit of a gaping hole is to tag around the subject matter of our content. For example, what is it really about in, in, a, in a topical term? That, that is not to tag a, a piece of content, for example, by, by the IBM brand name or the, pro, or the product, because a lot of our customers may not even know about that, particularly if they're in the early stage of the buy cycle. What we're really interested in is being able to analyze the text and say, this text is about uh, analytics, or this text is about uh, cognitive computing, or this text is about Internet of Things, or any of the other area, uh, areas of subject uh, matter in, in, in the markets in which we serve. So as we set about developing an automated method for, for producing these tags, we set a, a couple of core requirements right from the start. Uh, first of all, we established we wanted to take a software as a service approach, uh, essentially to help us uh, quickly get up and running on, on using these applications. We wouldn't get too bogged down in software installations and maintenance and updates and so forth. So that was a key requirement right there. Another requirement that we looked at is we wanted our system to be standards based. And that's primarily for reasons of interoperability. Um, as we're working with different data, we want to be able to work off of data that follows standardized formats, whether that's things like RDF for our taxonomy component, uh, Sparkle for being able to do, for doing queries. Uh, we don't want to have to reinvent the wheel. Again, the idea of getting up and running faster and having data which is interop interoperable across multiple systems. The last piece of this, uh, the components, uh, we build our system from components rather than take sort of an, an integrated uh, uh, all eggs in one basket kind of approach, is building off of the first two. And that's recognizing that the tools that we use today may not be the tools that we use tomorrow. And at some point, we may want to switch out any of these pieces of our solution, whether it's the taxonomy piece or the machine learning piece. But again, if it's a software as a surface component and if it's built on standards, then we'll be, we anticipate we'll be, very, uh, uh, be able to do that in, 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 a, in a relatively uh, painless way. So uh, the first step we did is we sketched out what our basic architecture would be like. And I'll sort of build this out here, describe what it is that we're looking to accomplish and what's the approach that we're taking to do that. So our basic workflow goes something like this. We have a source system where it might be a content management system or some other tool that's used for, for producing and generating content. And the end place where that winds up is in something called our digital registry. As I mentioned before, our digital registry is our centralized directory of URLs, content, and metadata. And it's also the gateway to all of our analytics applications that we use for tracking how the pages are performing. That then feeds off into a tag management system, which takes the metadata value out of our registry and actually applies the metadata onto the pages at runtime. Now, the piece that's missing in the middle is how do we get from just raw content into well-registered content with good metadata? And so what we envisioned is this tool called the Cognitive Tagging Service, which would analyze the text and generate the useful metadata. So then we thought, well, okay, what are the key components that we need to include in this service? One would be uh, an NLP component that would be able to analyze the text and identify relevant keywords and entities and so forth. But rather than just going with a straight out-of-the-box model, uh, which might involve requiring uh, a lot of tuning and a lot of adjustment a lot of customization. Um, we decided we wanted to focus our NLP that, uh, specifically on our subject domains. And that's to use not just a generic NLP engine, but one that's really been tuned to our, to our, to our subject domains and to the kind of keywords and the kind of concepts and text that we're looking for. And then the third piece of this is a semantic layer, because as we anticipate that we're going to be extracting just raw keywords, verbatim keywords out of the text, to make that, to, when it, to resolve that into useful metadata, we have to have some kind of sem sem semantic processing that will look at those keywords that are coming out and map them to a particular uh, metadata value, a controlled metadata value. So when you're baking a cake, uh, before you run out to the store and start looking, out for, looking for all your ingredients and shopping for your ingredients, usually the first thing you do is you open your pantry and see what's already in the pantry that we might be able to use already. So a couple of these components we already have within our IBM Watson stack. 
Uh, one is a tool called Natural Language Understanding, which is an API. Uh, it's on the, uh, the Watson Bluemix platform. It's available for anybody to use. Uh, and that provides us with the NLP uh, component. But there's also another service called the, no the Knowledge Studio, which is a software as a service offering. And that enables us to build a custom domain model, which will inform how the NLP performs and how, how the NLP processes. And then the third piece of this is um, a commercial tool called uh, Enterprise Data Governance, or it might also be known as uh, Enterprise Vocabulary Management, uh, EV, uh, sorry, EV, uh, Enterprise Vocabulary, Vocabulary Net, EVN. Uh, it's by the top grade company. And it's the tool that we use for our enterprise taxonomy management. Uh, so it's, again, it's something that we already have. It's already something that's part of our enterprise. And through APIs, we can interface it with these other tools. So that's the basic architecture as we sketch it out. So uh, when we look at the actual plan for execution and what the workflow would be, it's essentially these four steps. Uh, the first step is uh, training or building up a custom annotation model using the Knowledge Studio, then publishing that model to the NLP engine. So the NLP engine is, is again, looking only for the type of text signals that we've told it to look for based on where our domain interests are. And then the third piece of this is to take the extracted text normalize it to our metadata values, and then add that metadata to the, public, to, to the published web page. So that's sort of at a very high level, the process that's taking place. Uh, what I'll share with you next is how we get to that stage, and I'll, I'll share with you some of, the, some of the results that we're seeing and where we see going with this next. So the first thing we decided to do is to work with a very specific scope in our work. Uh, IBM has a huge product portfolio, lots of topics, lots of products, lots of offerings. If we try to do them all at once, it's the proverbial boiling the ocean problem. So in order to get a quick, a quick success and a quick hit, uh, we just picked one of our specific pain points. Uh, again, it's topical tagging, because that's an area that's not really being addressed right now by any of our uh, workflows. And the second piece of this was to limit it only to our marketing content. Again, meaning things like blog posts, uh, how-tos, tutorials, uh, product briefs, and so forth. Focusing on that scope of, scope of content rather than more the, the technical documentation because that's kind of a different sort of language set and a different, uh, uh, it, it might require a slightly different approach in terms of what kind of text signals we're looking for. So once we've identified that scope, the rest of the project setup is, is pretty much standard uh, for anybody who's familiar with doing this type of work of building up a classifier and training a system. We assemble our basic artifacts uh, like a corpus of documents that we can use for training and testing. Uh, we have uh, what I call here a, a, a type system, but that's really just an expression of our taxonomy. And we also have a dictionary, which is essentially the lexicon that we use for training up uh, the, uh, the annotator. And so once we've uh, assembled these components, and we've built our rules, and we've, worked, we've done our machine learning components, and we've trained and we, we, we've tested, uh, the next step is really to publish that model and evaluate it, and then continuously iterate on it. So. I'll talk a little bit the details of how we did that, but first, the place I want to really want to, where I want to start, this is also where things really end, um, is in the taxonomy. So again, our scope here is to extract meaningful topics out of the metadata. And we have a taxonomy that already exists. It's called our topics taxonomy. And it's used for several applications, but one of which is it's used for uh, faceted navigation and search on our IBM marketplace, which is one of our digital sales channel. It's managed centrally in this enterprise management tool. Um, as you can see, it's, it's multilingual, it's hierarchical, it has sort of all the classic properties of a taxonomy. And then what we did is we extended it. Uh, we took that graph, which is an RDF, and we imported it into a new graph, and we essentially enriched this taxonomy uh, with what I'll call the lexicon, but it's basically text signals that we've identified that we want to feed through to the, natural, to the NLP engine so it knows this is what, 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 what we want it to look for. You can sort of think of this as, as synonyms plus. Right? Uh, so what we did is we did some first level, uh, out of the box keyword extraction or corpus just to see what are some of the recurring uh, keywords or, or, or themes or, or tokens that come up. We also did keyword research working for, for some of our SEO tools. And we mapped these expressions that became part of our taxonomy. And once we've defined uh, that list of synonyms, that lex lexicon, we can then export that to the Knowledge Studio uh, tool, which is where we build out our annotation engines. And so one of the things that we do is we take all those components of the taxonomy, what in taxonomy terms we call the preferred terms and the synonyms or the alt labels and so forth. But in the dictionary, we call these the lemma and the surface forms. And again, these are just variants of the text that we use for building up our model. 
And this becomes the core of, of how the model is built. Um, just a, a quick view, this is some sc uh, screen, screenshots of the, uh, the editorial interface from the Knowledge Studio. And what I want to illustrate here is that there are two different approaches uh, that one can take in building out the annotation models. And we looked at both. We looked at a rules-based model and we looked at a, at a machine learning-based model. In the rules-based model uh, that I'm describing here, uh, what we did is we took that dictionary and although we could have created sort of classical uh, regular expression type rules, uh, we, we, tried, we took a little fast track with this and that we looked at the patterns of what are the typical signals that we're looking to extract. Well, most of the time they're noun phrases and they follow a pattern like noun, noun, business performance, or adjective noun, like mobile devices, or noun, 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 like content analytic software. So after we'd partitioned our dictionary into parts of speech, we could then create these rules which essentially assemble these components or these classes of, of parts of speech. And that becomes the basis for, uh, for, for uh, the rules that are, that are used to, uh, to build the annotator. The other approach we took is using the machine learning component. And what's neat about this is we actually engaged our SMEs to come into the tool and actually start to work with the corpus. Uh, what we did is we loaded up a corpus of documents into the tool. And the tool allows the SMEs to go through, look at pre-annotations that are performed automatically, again, using the dictionary, and either flag those um, annotations as being uh, acceptable, uh, rejecting the annotations, or adding annotations of their own. So all of this, all of this information, uh, all of these rules extractions, or all these uh, SME-moderated uh, annotations, go into building of the, the ground truth of the document, which or sorry, goes into building the ground truth of the annotator, uh, which is then forms the basis for how how, uh, how the, uh, the annotation model is created. So then once we built, it and, built and tested the annotation model, uh, we put it into service and we orchestrated all the various APIs. So we get a workflow that looks something like this. You start off with a basic document. Say in this case, it happens to be a, a case study that's uh, published to uh, one of our sites. And we use the, uh, the API, or we feed the, uh, the URL for that document into the, into the uh, API for the natural language processor. And then, because it's been trained on this custom domain, it's extracting out only the entities and the keywords that we've told it to look for, rather than using so, just sort of a generic model. So we get these sort of, uh, again, verbatim keywords that are coming directly out of the text. And then the next step is to take those list of keywords, and through a Sparkle query, we pass that to our taxonomy tool, resolve those keywords to controlled values, and then the end result of that is is a list of uh, normalized terms, which are then relevance ranked. We create an algorithm to do some relevance ranking on those on, on those uh, on, on, on the uh, extracted values on the normalized values, and then that is expressed as JSON, which can be picked up our system, picked up by our system, and then published to the final page. So, just really quickly, because I'm just uh, about out of time, uh, I just want to stress a couple things here. Uh, first of all, our process is very much a cyclical one in that because. Our content is being created by digital marketers who, if they're doing their job well, are doing their keyword research before they create a piece of content. So right at the get-go, we have a pretty well boundary domain. We know what the keywords are that we're looking for. We know that they should be in the content. We know to put them into the taxonomy. So by the time we're actually tagging those results, um, it's, it's all, all really more of a validation than anything else. However, we do see through this process, uh, we can identify not only what are the keywords, the expressions that occur in the text that we're matching on, but also which ones are we not matching on, which ones are we missing. And that comes out as a report that we're able to generate so that we can have a continuous iteration on our taxonomy and continuous iteration on our annotation model where we're seeing not only what are the terms that we're annotating, but also one of the ones that didn't get matched to a controlled vocabulary term. And then we can use those as signals for enriching the taxonomy and enriching the annotation models. So just very briefly, the numbers, here's how things came out. Um, we did a couple of tests of some of the different models, both the machine learning and, and the rules-based model side by side. And we did them in different phases. First, we looked at just a small subset of the taxonomy that was marketing top topics only. Then we looked at uh, a, a broader, uh, the full taxonomy across all the, the, the range of topics that we're annotating. And in all cases, um, we did a lot better than we expected. Um, our original goals were pretty modest. Our acceptance criteria in the first iteration is we were looking at 40% recall and 60% uh, precision, which was really very modest. So then we upped that up to 60 and 80, and then we found we were doing even better than that. Uh, and again, this is just across the board, uh, sort of some total uh, recall and precision, our basic measure. Some of the numbers we anticipate are going to change, we're going to need some adjustment as we, as we continue to work with the model, but the basic take-home lesson is that we met our acceptance criteria and we're ready, we passed the stage gate to move to the next level. So really quickly, just some of the lessons learned from the process. So we've seen through our work that, uh, number one, we can, uh, we can orchestrate these services 
to do what we set out to do, which is analyze text and transform it into meaningful metadata using uh, this orchestration of, uh, an, of, of, of APIs and software as a service. Um, the other yeah, key takeaway, number two, taxonomy is really central for this because having good taxonomy is important for, in, for informing not only our annotation model, but also how the resolution and the matching of the extracted entities uh, takes place downstream. And, and uh, just the third piece with this I'll point out is, again, the SME engagement is really critical, particularly in that machine learning stage where we're asking them to go in and validate uh, our initial annotations. It, it's nice to get them involved in the process. It's even a little bit fun for them because, first of all, there's, there's sort of a gamification aspect of it and just working with the tool and also sort of a sense of, wow, you know, I get to work with Watson, I get to work with this really neat new thing. So there we are, uh, advanced prototype, and next stage we anticipate in first quarter of new year, starting to scale up and build it to enterprise for internal use.